How are you guys doing today? Little question. You like this better? Or... Do you like this better? And it makes me look like I'm further away from the camera than I am. I kind of like this one better than this. What do you guys think? This? Or... This? One, with it out. Two, with it on. I kind of like two. So, leave a comment down below if you want one in the future or if you want two in the future oh, it looks like it could probably go down oh no nope. well two in the future um, I've also got a few other lenses and things like that that I can try later on for my phone let's go ahead here though turn off that noise because you probably were kind of hearing that little vibrating Let's jump right in here to Jim Butcher's turncoat. So you kind of get that fisheye. Jim Butcher's turncoat, book 11 of the Dresden Files. We today are on chapter 33. And we are moving quite along here. We've got a uh, binder is in with... Um, Shoot, what's her name? Madeline. Madeline the uh, vampire. Excuse me. He's in with her. And let's get a little bit of a breeze going in here. Interesting. I can only control the front two without the key in there. Anyway, so uh, those two are in there talking. Apparently Madeline is the one that hired Binder. And... Um, there's apparently another person on top of which both of them are scared of. So let's go ahead and find out what Dresden is going to do. Don't forget to mention also if you prefer camera one or camera two, or I should say lens one or lens two. Anyway, here we go into chapter 33. Murphy looked at the rolls and said, you're kidding. We'd driven down the sacks separately and she hadn't seen the wheels I was using. I was parked closer to the hotel, so we were about to get into the silver wraith together. It's a loner, I said. Get in. I'm not a material girl, she said, running a hand over the Rolls' fender. But damn. Can we focus here? I said. The world's coming to an end. Murphy shook her head and then got in the car with me. Well... At least we're going out in style. I got the rolls moving. It got plenty of looks, even in the dead of night, and the other motorists out so late gave it a generous amount of room, as if intimidated by the wraith's sheer artistry. Actually, they said, I'm kind of finding the rolls to be irrationally comforting. Murphy glanced aside at me. Why is that? I know how I'm going to die, you know. One of these days, maybe real soon. I'm going to find out. I've bitten off more than I can chew. I swallowed. I mean, I just can't keep from sticking my nose in places. People don't want it. And I always figured it would be the council who punched my ticket. Regardless who believed what about me. But there's a bunch of assholes there, and I just can't let them wallow in their own bull and pretend it's an air of nobility. Murphy's expression became more sober. She listened in silence. Now, the council's coming, and they've got good reason to take me out. Or it looks like it to them, which is the same thing. I swallowed again. My mouth felt dry. But... I somehow just have the feeling that when I go out, it isn't going to be in style. I gestured at the rolls with a vague sweep of one hand. This just isn't the car I drive to my death, you know. Murphy's mouth tucked up at one corner, though most of the smile was in her eyes. 
She took my arm between her hers and held it. Her hands felt very warm. Maybe mine were just cold. You're right, of course, Harry. You think? Definitely, she said. This car just isn't you. You'll die in some badly painted, hideously recycled piece of junk that seems to keep on running despite the laws of physics that say it should be melted to scrap by now. Whew, I said. I thought I might be the only one who thought that. Her fingers tightened on mine for a moment, and I clung back. The council was coming, and there wasn't anything I could do to fight them. Oh, sure. Maybe I could poke someone in the nose and run, but they would catch up to me sooner or later. There would be more of them than me, some of them every bit as strong as I was, and all of them dangerous. It might take a day, or a week, or a couple of weeks, but I had to sleep sooner or later. They'd wear me down. And that pissed me off. My sheer helplessness in the face of this whole stupid mess was infuriating. It wasn't as if I didn't have options. Mab still held a job offer open to me, for example. And it was more than possible that Laura Wraith might have the resources to shield me. Or broker me a better deal than the council was going to offer. When I thought of how unfair the whole thing was, I had more than a passing desire to grab whatever slender threads I could reach until I could sort things out later. Put that away. It almost sounded reasonable. Noble, even. I would, after all, be protecting other wrongly persecuted victims of the Council who littered the theorot the radical landscape of the future. It didn't sound nearly so much like entering bargains that went against everything I believed so that I could forcefully impose my will over those who were against me. I knew the truth. But just because it was true didn't make it any less tempting. What the hell was I going to do? I had a hidey hole planned out, but it had already been compromised. There was nowhere even a little bit safe I could take Morgan but my apartment, and the wardens were going to find him there. And on top of all that, I still had no freaking clue as to the identity of our mystery puppet master. Maybe it was time to admit it. This one was too big for me. It had been from the very start. Murphy, I said quietly. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Silence filled the beautiful old car. When's the last time you slept? Murphy asked. I had to take my hand back from hers to work the clutch. I gestured at my bandaged head. I can barely remember what day of the week it is. This morning, a couple of hours, I, I think, maybe. She nodded judiciously. You know what your problem is? I eyed her and then started laughing, or at least making an amused, wheezing sound. I couldn't help it. Problem? Singular? I choked out finally. No. What? You like to come off like you're the unpredictable chaos factor in any given situation, but at the end of the day, you obsess about having everything ordered the way you want it. Have you seen my lab? Again, with the inappropriately timed come-ons, Murphy said. I'm serious, Harry. I know. Some people who would really disagree with you. Like, what's his face? A, a Peabody? He's counsel? Yeah. Says I have no place in his bastion of order. She smirked. The problem is that your bastion of order is sort of tough to coexist with. I have no bastions. I I'm bastionless. Ha! Murphy said. You like the same car, the same apartment, the same restaurant. You're like not needing to answer to anyone and doing the jobs your conscience dictates you should do. 
without worrying about the broader issues they involve. You hang out fairly happy without much in the way of material wealth and follow your instincts and be damned to anyone who tells you otherwise. But that's the order. May I hear? Is there some other way it should be? She rolled her eyes. I rest my case. And how is this my problem? You've never really compromised your order for someone else, which is why you drive the wardens nuts. They have procedures. They have forms. They have reports. And more than unless someone twists your arm to make you do it. Am I right? Still don't see how that's a problem. She rolled down the passenger window and let one hand hang out. It's a problem. Because you never learned how to adjust inside someone else's order, she said. If you'd had, you'd realize what an incredible force you have working on your side. The A-team? Bureaucracy, Murphy said. I would rather have the A-team. Listen and learn, Maverick, Murphy said. The wardens are an organization, right? Yeah. Lots of members? Almost 300 and growing, I said. Lots of members who all have many obligations, who live in different areas, who speak different languages, but who have to communicate and work together somehow. Yeah. Behold, Murphy said. Bureaucracy. Organization to combat the entropy that naturally inhibits that kind of cooperative effort. Is there going to be a quiz later, or... She ignored me. Bureaucracies share common traits. And I think you've got more time to move in than you realize. If you weren't tired and hurting and an obnoxious fly in the ointment to anyone's order but your own, you'd see that. I frowned. How so? Do you think Madeline Wraith called up the White Council on her home phone, identified herself, and just told them you were helping Morgan? Murphy shook her head. Hello? I'm the enemy. Let me help you for no good reason. I sucked thoughtfully on my lower lip. The wardens would probably assume that she was trying to divert their resources during a manpower critical situation. Murphy nodded. And while they will look into it, they'll never really believe it, and it will go straight to the bottom of their priority list. So she calls an anonymous tip instead? So? So how many tips do you think the wardens have gotten? Murphy asked. Cops go through the same thing. Some big flashy crime goes down, and we have a dozen nuts claiming credit or convinced their neighbor did it. Another dozen jerks who want to get their neighbor in trouble. And three times that many well-meaning people who have no clue whatsoever and think they're helping. I chewed on that thought for a moment. Murphy wasn't far off the mark. There were plenty of organizations, and Lord only knew how many individuals would want to stay on the warden's good side, or who would want to impress them, or who would want to simply to have a real reason to interact with them. Murphy was probably right. There probably were tips flooding in from all over the world. I'll check the tip out, Murphy said, but I'm willing to bet you real money that depending on their manpower issues, it won't happen until several hours after the tip actually makes it into the hands of the folks running the show. And with any luck, given the council's issues with technology and communication, that will take a while as well. I mulled that one over for a minute. W what are you saying? She put her hand on my arm and squeezed once. I'm saying, don't give up yet. There's still a little time. I turned my head and studied Murphy's profile for a moment. Really? I asked her quietly. She nodded. Yeah. Like, love, hope, is one of those ridiculously disproportional words that by all rights should be a lot longer. I resetted my grip on the roll's steering wheel. Murph? Hmm. You're one hell of a dame. Sexist pig, she said. She smiled out the windshield. Don't make me hurt you. Yeah, I said. It wouldn't be ladylike. 
She shook her head as we neared my apartment. If you like, she said, take him to my place. You can hide out there. I didn't actually smile, but her words made me feel like doing it. Not this time. The wardens know where you live, remember? And if they start looking hard at me, they'll check me out too, Murphy said. But you can't keep him at your place. I know that. I also know that I can't drag anyone else into the middle of this clust, this mess. There's got to be somewhere, she said, someplace quiet and, well, not well known and away from crowds. She paused and where you can protect him from tracking magic and where you'd have the advantage if it had come to a fight. I didn't say anything. Okay, Murphy said. I guess maybe there aren't any places like that around here. I snapped my head straight up. Hell's bells, I breathed. I felt a grin stretch my mouth. I think maybe there is. What? Wait a minute. There's some place that Dresden thinks that maybe he could get the upper hand or maybe he uh, could go there to hide. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder where this place is or where he's thinking of. Do you think it's been mentioned or uh, kind of foreshadowed in one of the previous books? That'd be something interesting to look into. Also, if you guys could like, share, and subscribe, that would be awesome. I know there's been kind of a, a lot of criticism that's been building up for some reason about how my dyslexia... See, I can't even... Anyway, how I can see the word correctly and my brain interprets it, but as it comes out of my mouth, it sometimes is a little bit foobard. Um, I have been getting some criticisms on that, but I know that overall you guys have been really, really loving this, and hopefully, I feel like I have, hopefully you guys feel like I have also kind of been improving on my reading and my ability to actually put sight to mouth, because it is kind of a difficult thing to do for any length of time. Anyway, or at least for me, I should say. Anyway, I did want to thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me today, for the wonderful comments that you leave down below, and the, the comments that actually show that you guys listen to the beginnings and ends and kind of interact with them as well. I did want to thank you guys so very much for that. That's what actually makes it worth me doing this for a couple of years now without actually making any money, donating all my time to this. I did want to say that you guys make it well worth the effort. And thank you guys so, so very much. You few that comment first, you few that jump in there, you, you few know who you are that really make reading this worthwhile. And I wanted to come out and specifically say to you guys, thank you so, so very much. It's because of you guys, I believe, that this channel has grown. It's because of you guys, I believe, that I've been able to continue and keep going. And it's because of you guys that I've kind of felt the strength to be able to keep moving forward with this channel. Like I said, even though it, it is pretty much a donation of my time. And I did want to thank you guys so, so very much for that. And you have a wonderful and blessed day.